welcome back members now dr c a pargun kumar sir will uh, take the session on audit of trust society and section 8 company discussion on form 10b and its requirement with this i hand over it to pargun kumar sir friends it is time for me to make my presentation now it is uh, 1201 up to 115 non stop i will speak in between i will put questions to you only you please don't put questions in between from 115 to till your patience all your questions i will answer so 1 hour 15 minutes minimum i need non stop non stop even you need not look into the ppt gpt that's all but the xm4 please subject is so important in the first session you have seen registration sir pv srinivasan sir has beautifully presented that a charitable trust or institution not of institution it is a, a charitable trust or institution why why because since time immemorial these trusts are existing societies act 1862 indian trust act 1872 companies act 1956 removed by 2015 13 companies act no 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 before all these things the trusts were there under which act you are doing are my grandfather my grandfather that raja 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 was doing it where is the question of these three acts but they are all covered under the income tax act if at all you want exemption so the registration first part sir has dealt under the respective acts and also under the income tax act my first question to you how many of you have applied and got under the income tax my subject is totally income tax subject how many of you have applied and got for ab registration the form 10ac kindly raise the hand sir roughly 50% in that form 10ac how many conditions are there that this registration is subject to these conditions how many of you have read those conditions how many are there in your form 10a how many are there how many sir very very important sir the registration for ab section has been opened on 1421 the time has been extended from september 21 to december 21 to 31st march 22 for the assessment year 22 23 so when they issued form 10a they attached 18 conditions on june 3rd 22 by mistake we attached 18 conditions cbtd issued a circle number 15 on 3rd june 2022 please consider only 11 conditions how many of you are aware of these 11 conditions what are the seven conditions they have removed this is very important for 22 23 assessment year we are all going to file 22 23 assessment year return but what conditions were to satisfy what the cbt did expected unless we go through the subject thoroughly what the job we are doing will result into as i told in the beginning opening remarks 1 crore 2 crores 76 crores 200 crores for charitable uh, charitable trust 
demands physically live i can show so we must be thorough with all the conditions with which the registration is given for understanding the exemption of section 11 or the exemption of section 1023c section 12ab is a registration condition first and foremost condition to enjoy income tax act exemption 12ab registration is a first condition if it is a 1023c approval of this is a first condition for both of them same form 10a the new 10a not the old 10a from 1421 you should have applied you should have got the registration then alone whether it is provisional or five years five years is known as a, a permanent one three years is known as a provisional one now who should apply who should apply sir has dealt with as a supplement to pv srinivas sir sirs, i am now giving you some questions asking you some questions every limited company generally under the income tax act schedule 4 of the income tax act to give exemption for a provident fund trust the trust must be registered satisfy the conditions of that schedule 4 whether it is a superannuation fund or a gratuity fund it should be a trust income tax act mandated can such provident fund trust gratuity fund trust apply for 12ab registration old 12a gone by 31st march 21 from 1421 for assessment year 22 23 onwards registration is a must for enjoying its income exemption can a provident fund gratuity fund trust apply for this registration or not my question anybody answer sir who should apply for registration would you heard about provident fund trust every company floats so can they apply answer is no which is the correct answer why pardon sir correct they are doing a charitable activity but for ident provident fund trust is a no profit non profit motive trust gratuity trust is a non profit motive trust non profit motive is the first condition but the beneficiary should be unidentified public at large sir has said to give that meaning elaborate only as a supplementary thing i am giving these questions and answers so as a supplementary these trusts are meant for identified people if it is for identified people it is not for public public means unidentified people so that is the answer. similarly in every town you will find so many associations lari owner association cloth merchant association rice miller so so many associations my first question can a cloth merchant association registered as a society under the society act can it apply for 12ab registration to get its income exempt yes sir no sir pv sanam sir said yes anybody else sir yes it can be yes it can be no when you are registered the society if you have exclusively mentioned that the benefits of the society shall be only for the members you cannot register under 12ab they are identified people if you have registered the society with the memorandum and bylaws objects not only for the members benefit for the benefit of the public also in income tax act without mentioning any section principle of mutuality is recognized under the income tax act number of court supreme court decision to high court decisions principle of mutuality is recognized under the income tax act so the principle of mutuality says if members only are contributing members only are the beneficiaries then it is a principle of mutuality uh, with the right hand they are contributing with the left hand they are only enjoying then 
such a trust such a society need not file the income tax return it is not income at all income should be from outside to such society then that outside income only is taxable members contributing giving is not taxable why i should bring this question and clarity in the morning the um, first session one member was asking about uh, residents association uh, apartment residents association its property its income he has been putting the question so can a residents association apply for registration residents association first it emanates from the rera 2016 real estate regulation and development act 2016 it starts its birth rera act has said every builder who registered under the rera who should register under the rera is another question registered under the rera after completion of the project must hand over to the association the common areas and the management extra common properties so can such association register under the income tax act under 12ab answer sir i have already given the clue that if it is exclusively meant for members it cannot have registration under the income tax act because it is for identified people no public charity though it is non profit motive members are association not for profit not for any commercial activity no it cannot now <clears throat> my last question in india majority of the temples even now are 100 years old 200 years old 500 years old 1000 years old i come from the temple town it has got a history of known history of more than 1500 like that there are there so can such temples which are existing as public religious trusts for centuries can they register under 12ab of the income tax act or not no deed can they register under the income tax act or not we have to understand the problem no unless i put these questions we will not answer can they register sir yes the present trustee's declaration is sufficient that it is a trust existing with some evidence they too can register under 12ab they have to register okay so the income tax act wants to give exemption under section 11 or 1023c by 2022 finance act 90% similarities are there between the 1023c and section 11 exemptions there are few differences through one of my slides i will try to explain you <clears throat> so first condition is it should be a public religious or charitable definitely religion is not defined in the income tax act charitable purpose is defined in the income tax act can there be religious come charitable institutions which can be registered so a number of decisions especially the supreme court decision of daudi bara samaj has 100% addressed this recently it has said a religious come charity can be there and uh, a religion predominantly is a charity only a religion and true religion is predominantly charity only what the religion says do service to the people be human being be kind to others be kind to animals be kind to the nature so preservation of nature is one of the definitions of charitable purpose so it can be religious come charitable also why these three words are necessary when you are applying for 12ab registration form 10a says which one is your objective charitable if it is charitable that form 10a asks if it is charitable education one or more you can have two three also so ticket it is asking so that's why at the time of registration itself should not why should i now after the registration topic is over tell you about this ticking because the audit 
the farm can be certificate unless you unless you go through the objects go through how many you have ticked while applying over 10 years registration unless you see all these things writing the accounts giving the 10b audit report or giving the 10b b audit report is insufficient job or say defective job you have to know first of all when you want to claim exemption under section 11 what are the objectives of this public religious or religious come charitable or exclusively charitable i still go further even among the charitable what are the, your charitable activities is it education only is it medical relief only or yoga or down the line seventh one which was earlier when i studied my ca fourth one now it has gone to seventh number advancement of another object somebody asked in the first session a sports association can it register can it claim exemption sports association under which class of this charitable purpose it will fall advancement of another object of public utility a literary association dance association music association or any other thing go shala preservation of cows goes under the advancement of another why should you know this object class in the definition of charitable purpose because section 215 the charitable purpose is having the three provisos three provisos uh, condition the purpose condition the meaning of charitable purpose there is a decided case a goshala running people in their pindal account in their income next expenditure account sale of carcass dead cow skin is sold milk sales the assing officer seeing it are yours is a commercial activity goshala comes in advancement of another object probability the definition section 215 read with three provisos introduced in 2008 says if there is any commercial activity because of which your grass receipts 20 percent or more are exceeding because of this commercial receipts it is no longer a charitable purpose so the assing officer the gosala assessment yours is a more than 20 percent sales of dead carca sales of the milk so you are no longer a charitable purpose i am forfeiting <coughs> the matter went up to the court the court said court said what is meant by commercial activity shelling itself will become a commercial activity gentlemen how how can it survive i want my object is preservation of cow preservation of cows preservation of the nature and the animals is there in the indian constitution the charitable purpose definition is there how can you preserve without feeding them how can you expect charitable means 100 percent private people give donation and you buy the grass and then feed the cows only you don't say you should give the milk freely no it is not the commercial activity it is part of charitable only don't give a narrow meaning for that commercial activity in the advancement of another object of public utility so section 13 sub section 8 says in case you are covered by this section 215 provisos you cannot claim section 11 exemption this is there in 13. first of all fundamental things let us understand in the income tax act exemptions are different deductions are different disallowances are different under the business set what you do you are computing the taxable income by identifying the disallowances only. Under section 11, 12, 13, you are computing opposite of that. What is the opposite of it? The section 11, 12, 12A, 12AB and 13 say what is not eligible for exemption. 
what is eligible what is not eligible for exemption only it will say they are not saying like your business head section 40 with so many subsections disallowances there you are computing by disallowances here you are computing the taxable income by exemptions reverse why should you know that why should you know that the charitable purpose religious purpose income application now is conditioned by section 40 capital a3 cash payments and section 40 small a a tds provisions mutatis mutandis will apply for the application of income which is mandatory 85 percent of your income in the same previous year should be applied section 11 1 small a income exempt is your income is exempt provided you apply 85 percent of your income during the previous year section 11 is having explanation 1 2 3 4 so in that explanation this 40 capital a and 40 a sir cell has to be switched off sir it should not ring again sir so the 40 capital a application of the 40 capital a 3 and 40 a ia in the business head is different in the charitable head is different how many of you have noticed this difference sir can anybody tell me you are in fact very good one person what is the difference same section that is mutandis will apply for the application of income why i say in the business head you start your payable account take with net profit add 40 a3 add 40 a here it is not that no question of adding disallowing 40 a3 and 40 a directly pay 30 percent no question of adding subtract many of us generally thought sir i applied income 90 percent as per those provisions, 5% the trust could not apply, 40 capital A3. So in 15% general standard, no question of 15% standard deduction, sir. Even if 90% you are sure and 5% you have laid, 5% you must pay the tax. Because not exempt, that's all. Not exempt, taxable. The fundamental difference between the competition under the business head because our mind we got 90 percent who do business returns our mind is tend to go like that only not in the different way of thinking the interpretation of the act we should be very careful in dealing with this 11 12 13. We should be very careful so the conditions the conditions for getting the income exempt under 1023c or under section 11 one must be meticulous fall Many of the CAs, 2020-20 Finance Act has said, 2020-20 Finance Act has said, under the Income Tax Act, any provisions where there is an audit report, condition, such audit report shall be filed one month before the due date of filing of the return. Human beings, I am also a human being. I do commit bigger mistakes because I deal with the bigger cases. I do commit bigger mistakes. So, majority of the CAs for business 44 AB, 20 Finance Act, assignment 21 22. For assignment year 21 22, February 15th, 22 was the due date for filing of the return. Till February, doing the audit, doing the audit, along with the return, filed the audit report, 44AB. They thought similar will be the case for trusts also. So trust audit report, trust return, filed February 15th. They filed several tax audit reports. Single notice has not come. They filed several 10Bs or 10 BB. What is the result? 100% demand notice for trust. 
for business people no demand notice not even a single penalty notice also even now i could not see several cases ground reality i am telling ground reality i am telling majority of the trusts received you are supposed to file your audit report one month before the due date of filing of the return you have uploaded the audit report along with the return thereby your section 11 exemption need not be given if section 11 exemption is not there tax will become high so in tax audit if you file a belated audit report 44 ab audit report 271 capital b top percent of the turnover maximum one and a half lakhs penalty that penalty is also covered by 273 capital b reasonable cause covid sir my staff all undergone covid what is it i can do they came only on february 5th and only i have done it february 5th. reasonable cause 100 percent no penalty one repeat no damage for trust there is no 273 b reasonable cause Nothing, whatever, you cannot. No condemnation, no reasonable cause. Within the due date, you are not well. Exemption last. Even the condemnation power is not there to the commissioner for delayed filing of the return. There are condemnation powers to the commissioners. What are the? If audit report is not audit report, if the return of income is not filed on or before the due date, no question of giving any condemnation for forum 10 for forum 9a for audit report condemnation of delay power the cbtd has given it limited to 365 days by chance we have forgotten there are some people some of our colleagues in that hurry first file the return file the return in the morning file the return in the evening uploaded the audit report the cpc gave the timings before this, sir, you have done after that, sir. No, sir. CPC gave it. Now time also recorded. So one must be very careful about these conditions. So my job today is what are the conditions for preparing the accounts, for conducting the audit, and then issuing the audit report fundamental thing form 10b or 10bb audit report first part is there second part is there just like your uh, tax audit report tax audit report 44ab you are having 3cb 3cd in this 10b also first part is there second part is there what is the difference between the first part and second part can anybody sir can anybody sir Sir, or else I will come to the tax audit itself. Tax audit, what is the difference between 3CD and 3CB? Fundamental difference, not that uh, line by line, words, sections, fundamental difference. Sir, pardon, sir. Uh, I to see a, both are chartered accountants. Section 288 defense who is a chartered accountant, who is an accountant. So let us not about that. I am asking the fundamental difference. Audit report is form 3CB. Uh. Uh, or else, or else uh, for want of time, the institute has set the difference. There is a difference between an audit report and an audit certificate. There is a difference between an audit report and an audit certificate which is relevant for my today topic. What is audit report? What is audit certificate? Form 3CB is an audit report. 3CD is a certificate. In 10B also, first part is a audit report. Second part is a audit certificate. This is the fundamental difference. So audit report means we're expressing an opinion. On that opinion, 46 uh, auditing standards you have to compulsorily follow even for 
non-profit organizations like religious charitable institutions. All the auditing standards will apply. Normally, no accounting standard will apply. Normally, for these non-profit organizations. Whereas tax audit, it will apply. So, the audit report true and fair will be an audit report only the fundamentals of accountancy is to follow. The CA is short. for which we are all members, our alma mater, all these years has not prescribed, has not advocated any format of accounts for other than corporates. But on June 4th, 2022, a technical guide is issued for all non-corporates that is applicable even for trusts. So for the first time, for 22-23, even the tax audits, even the 10B audit report, which is to be accompanied, because all these years, Section 11 exemption or 1023, you need not upload your balance sheet, income and expenditure account, along with ITR 7. But from last year, 21-22 onwards, you have to upload your audited financial statements even for these institutions. So then audited financial statement means for the trust format is not mandatory. For the person who is issuing a certificate, it is we are governed by that. A technical guide means definitely though it is recommendatory. Guidance note is mandatory. Technical guide is recommended. Even that recommendatory is applicable to you because once we recommend it, why you have ignored it? Why you are just like that you finalize the accounts? So we have to 21 March accounts, now you have to redraft to suit in this. Current year and previous year simultaneously should be there and then finalize the accounts and file the return this time. So, here, number of schedules are there for balance sheet. Number of notes on accounts are there, which we have to follow. Please go through that. It is, though it is recommendatory by the ICA. Definitely any accounting standard also. When I passed my CA final in 1979, there were no accounting standards. There were no auditing standards. It doesn't mean I can still a member ignore. Whatever the changes coming in the society, especially institutes, anything which is recommendatory for us to one or two years will become mandatory after that. So better at the recommendatory stage itself, 100% follow. Thereby you can avoid something. So, <clears throat> only in 2022 Finance Act, both under 1023C and full AB, which my after lunch speaker is going to touch, 2022 Finance Act amendments relating to these things, has made it mandatory that the books of account shall be maintained by every charitable religious institution. Will it mean or is it conveying a meaning for all these years you issued the audit reports, same 10B for the past 20 years, 30 years, without books of accounts? If you read the 10B, which is there for the past 20 years, the institution has maintained the books of accounts. 10B wordings, they have not changed either earlier or even now. The institution has maintained the books of accounts. The financial statement drawn or in agreement with the books of accounts. Information is provided to me to express opinion, thereby subject to my comments, the financial sheet, micro management balance sheet are true and fair. This is the wording either in 10B or 10BB since decades. So now only the amendment has come 2022, it's only to regularize the technical mistake, doesn't mean that early also books of accounts maintenance is the duty of the charitable institution, even now it is the duty of the charitable. So, primarily maintenance of books of accounts are their duty. Preparing the financial statements also is their duty. And as auditor, reading together with the notes on accounts, accounting policies, accounting methods should be disclosed in the notes on accounts. And read together only, they should give a holistic picture. So, 
why should i insist in my presentation on this format of accounts new format and the accounting policies of these things because accountancy part of this public religious and charitable institutions is one part of the professional job it is nothing to do or it has got something to do only not fully while computing the exemption under section 11 long back the supreme court in kedarna jutmil said accountancy is not the final thing for arriving the taxable income so your accountancy may be something what you have shown as a liability may be your income for which unless under section 11 you claim the exemption it will become a taxable income so the section 11 exemption though the accounts you prepare as per the format as per the general accountancy norms to express a true and fair opinion the exemption part is different the exemption part should be based on the provisions of 11 12 13 only to elaborate my statement by an example every religious and charitable institutions income side you should specify minimum to three or four categories similarly your income and expenditure expenditure side you should subclassify into four minimum similarly your balance sheet capital receipts capital payments also minimum three sub classifications you should classify then only you can compute the correct income your audit report first part true and fair may be only income like your balance sheet second part in the case of form 10 bb it starts with the income of the trust that question is not there in 10 b in 10 b application of the income during the year first question in 10 b so what is the income what is the application if you want unless you classify this you cannot get it so i have given a model a receipts and payment account now you can see this on the screen this is my conception understanding the provisions i have conceived this not the institute not anybody else being a practical person i am telling you without preparing the receipts and payment account merely based on income and expenditure merely based on balance sheet you cannot compute correct exemption correct taxable thing this is already there in your books you need not write down it's already there in the book unfortunately it seems some pages uh, reverse is there no are they all from one page one to ten my thing there may be something different don't worry don't worry about the books huh? so you see this receipts and payment account you have to necessarily prepare only in 2022 finance act now for the assessment year 23 24 assessment year 23 24 the application shall be only on cash basis this is the amendment which after lunch the amendment is going to be taken up by him but why should I now 22 23 tell you this for 22 23 also because of the 2021 finance act amendment and the earlier provisions I ask you to prepare the receipts and payment account though now only for application expenditure revenue expenditure and capital expenditure from the current financial year 22 23 assessment year 23 24 only cash system is made mandatory but for 22 23 assessment year you can claim on accrued basis or cash basis but converting from mercantile system to cash system is permitted for charitable institutions in my paper slides you will find the case law leisurely after going home you read the case law also so recession payment is a must and recession payment also in such a way 
for the total institution restriction payment account that institution may be having several institutions individually for example an educational society may have a high school a plus two college a degree college a nursing college those aict engineering college approvals they respectively ask them to maintain separate set of books of accounts for each educational institution so that that uh, recognition DEO, district education officer, to give a high school a recognition, he wants separate set of books of accounts. So, though you maintain them under the Income Tax Act, because you got 12AB registration for the assessment year 2023, your resistance payment must be a consolidated resistance payment account. Under this format, if you have, then it is easy for you to fill up the 10B columns, which you have to set correctly fill up with the present day technology whatever you fill up wrongly the ITR 7 and the accounts you are giving now earlier income tax is not there balance sheet is not there it's all right now your accounts are there and the audit report is there artificial intelligence can easily catch the mistake if you are filling up wrongly so the basis should be a thorough basis so the resistance payment on first time coming to the Vertical resistance payment accounting to a horizontal to top portion is revenue, bottom portion is capital. So this revenue and capital, I have further bifurcated the revenue into revenue from objects, main objects, children's tuition fees, students' tuition fees, let us say, patients' uh, uh, fees, hospital. So the main operations, objects, income, one part. Property and investment income, a temple is having shops, rental income, FDs, interest income, second part, third part, any incidental business, a temple is selling ladoos, temple is not interested to incur loss for these ladoos, because if they are incurring loss on ladoos, local suites of fellows will buy the same ladoos and then mix with his uh, bundi and give it because he purchased less than the cost. So, temple has to necessarily sell them for at cost or profit. Whenever you sell for at cost repeatedly, business activity. What is meant by business? Section 213 of the Income Tax Act, business means trade, commerce. Business includes, not means. Inclu includes means everything included. Business includes commerce, trade, manufacturing, everything. So, anything with a profit motive year after year, if you repeat, it becomes a business. So, the Income Tax Act said, for a business maintenance of separate set of books of funds is a must. Same society, same religious trust or charitable trust. Whenever there is an incidental business, main business only before 1970, if somebody donated his wine shop for the trust, all my wine shop income I don't want. I want this uh, temple to enjoy that wine shop as if uh, God is going to take something. Huh? So, that was before 1970, the Act 11.4 over the section. So 11.4a is only now applicable. 11.4a means any incidental business only is permitted. If you carry on other than incidental business, section 11 exemption is cut. Because some of the young CAs used to ask me, sir, my business income, I don't want to pay the tax. Sir. Can I give it to a trust and then say, in the name of trust, I am doing something. Nothing doing. The business income automatically section 11 will go you have to pay there also tax no don't do such tax planning I advise so other than incidental business what is meant by incidental business it should be related to the main object then only it is incidental business a hospital running a medical shop is incidental to hospital without selling medicines how can you run the hospital is incidental so the incidental business activity only is allowed, not a separate business, any business. So a separate set of books of account shall be maintained. Compliance of all the business is a must. And then such income shall be used for the main objective, if these conditions are expected. So what is business receipt? What is business expenditure? In your books of accounts, separate books of accounts, but consolidation, you should bring here a receipt and payment account. And then donations donations are two types as we all know in fact though it is not prescribed in the income tax i advise trust 
donations, two separate receipt books you maintain, two separate bank accounts you maintain. Why? Normal donations. What is normal donation? Without specifying any condition, I don't want to donate. Okay, normal. Give one receipt and those that money you put in one bank account. Specific direction donations, the word used in the world. Nothing but corpus donations, you call it, or any fund donations, you call it. For a college, as a old student, I go, I want to donate one lakh rupees. So in this college, I studied become four decades ago. Oh, please, my one lakh rupees, keep it as an endowment fund. On this one lakh rupees, whatever the interest you get, give highest marks in the income tax paper, a student, give him as a prize every year. Then, it is a specific direction donation, but not a corpus donation. The word English corpus means, after this respiration, this is a corpus. So, body. So, what forms what of the body? That's a Kamalasan cinema. He becomes it after that. So, that's what Kamalasan's dialogue. So, the corpus. <clears throat> corpus fund donations, 2021 Finance Act has said in the case of charitable institutions, shall be maintained separately. Earlier, so many people were doing jig-jag, some circus feats with these charitable institutions. So, any corpus fund donations shall be maintained specifically as per section 11.5, then alone section 11, subsection 1, class D, 11 1D exemption can be availed, otherwise no. So what is exempt, what is taxable is our exercise. We should, unless we classify them, unless we identify them at the end of the year, and are we satisfying the conditions, then alone the income will be exempt, otherwise it becomes a taxable income. So, the revenue side, income side, I have explained the purposes, why it is there. The revenue expenditure side, if you go, administration expenses. If you are having FCRA, you will know the conditions that FCRA, what is your administration expenditure out of the foreign funds? It is specifically asking. But in ITR 7 also administration expenses, you have to classify them. After doing the audit, in filling up ITR 7, it is asking, admission, what do you mean by administration? Sir? Not related to the objects, for the sake of objects. Directly related to the objects, second item, expenditure, objects related expenditure. In a school, teachers salaries, objects expenditure. Office manager salary, administrative expenditure. You have to fill up in the ITR 7 as per this. So, when you prepare the decision payment account, you should classify them correctly, correctly fill up, correctly prepare and fill up. That's why I am giving this. Similarly, business expenditure. As I said, if at all you are having any incidental business, it's a business related expenditure. It may include salaries, it may include materials, it may include some other service charges. All that shall be in the business expenditure. Last item on the revenue side. Donations to other trusts. Donations to other trusts can be two types. For the other trusts, normal donation, normal income you donated. I am an education institution. I got surplus. 85% I am not able to spend. But there is another young educational institution, young educational trust, who are struggling to get sufficient fees. Then 85% what I have to apply, I will donate to the other educational institution. You use it for your salaries. No problem, 100% permitted. It is application. First part. Second part. See, yours is also education. You are struggling to get the computers. For buying your computers, for buying, for constructing your building, I am donating. It is known as corpus fund donation. Not allowable. It is not application. Difference is there. So, what sort of donation you are giving to other institutions, though they must have similar objects like you, you must identify resistance payment account, you try to classify them. Now I am coming to the capital receipts, capital payments. Capital receipts, I have given you broadly three.
I will answer it by 150. Thank you. So the capital receipts, three types. What are the capital receipts, three types? First, corpus fund donations you received. Under section 11, 1D, the condition just now I said, whatever you receive as corpus fund donation is subject to three conditions. When it is exam, A, whatever you receive, you should apply it during the year as per section 115 more. If you receive building fund, you must construct the building. Not possible. Then, if not constructing the building, you keep it in bank FD, separately building fund investments. The CA Institute long back has issued fund accounting one book. Search the CA Institute website. Fund accounting means every trust may have several funds. Each fund, what is the definition of fund? Fund means a, an amount identified and represented by earmarked investments only is the fund. And the liability side, your fund will be there. Same amount should be there in one or more investments. The word investment, if you search for charitable trust, number of decisions. What is investment? What is not investment? Because section 11.5 says all the charitable and religious institutions must have their money, funds, income. Uh, in the section 11.5 specified deposits and investments. Deposit means number of quotations. Investment means number of quotations. Why? Because the taxing, assessing officer, one educational institution in the month of June, July, lot of admissions money. What to do with this money? They went for a Margadarshi chits, Sri Ram chits, subscribed for the chits. In the balance sheet, the assessing officer has seen. Rear, your money you should keep in 11.5 mode. Yes, sir, I deposited with the chit company. It is a deposit. It is not a deposit, man. Deposit definition is different. You lose your exemption to the extent you parted. So number of decisions are there. You please see. So 11.5, section itself enumerated some modes like land, building, jewelry, furniture, equipment, and rules also specified under section 11.5 have given some more types of deposits and investments. Those methods only shall be maintained as per the 2021 Finance Act. So the corpus fund donations identify whenever you receive. What you are going to do through a separate bank account, I am advising because act said maintained specifically. So what this money corpus fund you are doing? Sometimes, though I give you this table, there need not be, there need not be revenue receipts is equal to revenue payments, capital receipts is equal to capital payments. It's not possible. Not sometimes, majority of the times. For any institution, 100% watertight compartment, can you do it? Generally, not possible. For example, an engineering college of 20 years old, it is not able to get good number of students. But AICT says you should maintain this much staff, whether students are there or not. So many regulations. Their salary also is prescribed by AICT. Then some part of the land is sold. Some part of the land is sold. Sale of asset secondary. That sale money is used for salaries. Objects, second item in the revenue. So Capital receipts, second item, used for revenue payment, second item. So possible, no? In the real running of maintenance of trust. Now, what is the exemption? What is the taxable thing? Why we are preparing this ultimately to arrive? To which extent exam? To which extent taxable? Revenue receipt to which extent exam? Which extent taxable? Capital receipt to which extent exam? Which extent? That is our job. We have to fill up that form, then be audit report, or then be audit report. Accounts are finalized is different, that format. See. So now, the capital receipts, especially under 1023C is not there. Under section 11, subsection 1, 
capital A, one A, they specifically said for trust, in case of sale of assets, investments, A, they have given actually three possibilities. If you read carefully section 11, 1A, again three possibilities are given. In the case of sale of assets, in the same year, with the same money, if you buy another asset, no question of any taxable income. Sale of assets money is 100% exempt. Sale of assets means immediately our mind will go to capital gain chapter, sale proceeds, computation of capital gain, long term, short term, this, that, forget. Sale of asset. If you go for a new asset, it is 100% money, no question of taxable income. What is meant by new asset? The CBTD circular itself, way back, long back, has given a circular saying that even a bank FD is a new asset. Minimum six months you should keep the CBTD circular set on that number of quotation set. Are, if you keep the bank FD sufficient, even three months is sufficient. Don't worry about six months CBTD circular. Quotes interpreted because it is circular, it is not in the act. So the capital receipts were examining how they are going to be taxable, how they are going to be exempted. So the corpus fund donations, I said, specifically maintained 11.5. If the corpus fund donations, if you use for revenue expenditure, in the year of you using the revenue expenditure, that is section 11.1D exemption is not there, thereby your corpus fund donation becomes a normal donation and 85% you have applied or not, condition will apply. Second rider, the last year, 2021 financial in the year subsequently, if you make good that 111D direction, because they are corpus fund donations, the donor said, don't use it for revenue expenditure, keep it as a FDA. But I could not, I passed a resolution. In the present, if it is an orphanage, let us say, old age home, let us say. In the old age home, somebody gives the corpus fund donation. For the present people, there is no food. So let us pass a resolution. Sir, this year corpus fund meet for the food of the old age people. Next year, some data, some donor with a magnanimous heart again gave some more money. Then what you can do? Replenish. In the year you replenish, again claims section 11 1D. Act clearly said. So which year, what purpose you are using the money? Source. To want me to deviate uh, Modi ji after coming 2014 the income tax act substantially is twisted for every money source is important man earlier source is not important whenever the partnership firm is uh, cash minus array partners capital partners they will admit uh, partners will pay income they don't worry now, without source, any money found, either company, partnership firm, individual, I am traveling from here to back to Tirupati. In my uh, pocket, uh, some 10 lakhs money is found by the police Nakabandi in the border of uh, They will inform the Inkandais. Inkandais people will come. How you got 10 lakhs? Sir, I cannot say. If I say, my good friends, each one has donated 1 lakh rupees, I gave them advice, 30% tax. I must prove who has given that 10 lakhs of peace. If I don't say how the money has come, how much it will suffer? 60 plus 25 percent of that, 15 percent, 75 plus penalty, unless I pay the advance. So this applies to every possible thing through the Income Tax Act. So source is more important now. Source, if you don't uh, prove, gone for So that is the substantial change in the Income Tax Act. So especially in 132, 133, a survey search, unless you give a coaching, on that day you cannot give coaching, no. Prior to that you should have given the coaching. Are you, are you are having substantial money. Whenever the people come, you simply say, I have done some businesses, I will give you the details, all illegal business, don't worry. Illegal business also is, so please, I am ready to pay 30%. Give that coaching. Otherwise say, that fellow, sir, I don't know how I got the money. I got the money, this is my money only. Then pay 75%. So you should give the coaching to such people, vulnerable people who are having a very fatty, um, wealthy. So better uh, let them be coached in such a way. At least worse come worse. If they come and find only any, sir, they may come. Who knows? So 
statements, analyzing your bank accounts, analyzing your financial statements. Now artificial intelligence, how much black money this fellow has generated can be counted. That is the technology from 1-6-2021 Modiji is using. So coming back to our topic, sources related to the application in the charitable religious institutions, application and source are to be related. So, the corpus fund donations are exempt if you keep as per 11.5 in the same year. In case you are not, then 85% rule will come. And in the year in which you replenish the corpus fund, it will again get 11.1D exemption. Sale of assets, I gave you section 11.1A. 11.1 capitalizes if you invest totally in the new asset, no question of possibility of any taxable income. In case, sale of assets, if you keep in FD also, it is sufficient for minimum six months. There is no condition, even the new asset, how many months or how much period. You sold one land, bought one land. And again, second year sold the same land and again bought the third land. Even then you can get exemption strictly as per these provisions. Because one sale, again another asset. It didn't say long term capital gain. It didn't say short term capital gain. A sale of asset, investment in asset. That's all. But of course, repeatedly if you see, do that. If I am the asking officer, I will say, oh, act you are intelligently using. Three years continuously, three lands you sold, three lands you bought. You are doing a land business. Business is not your object. Non-permitted business, section 11 exemption. I will put it that way. So, anything with genuine purpose, if you do only, otherwise say logic will reverse many number of times. So then comes the loans received, the third capital receipt, which is more important. So what is loans received? Sir, after 115, now 103. So the loans received is income or not? No. Loan, how can it be income? In the definition of 224, inclusive definition, no. In the 224, subclass small 2A, voluntary contributions is income. Subclass 18 of 224 says, any government grants except again said something below shall be taken as income. These two are important for our charitable institution. 224, small 2A, voluntary contribution is income. And then class subclass 18, Government grants are income from 2014, the income definition is amended, and 2015, they have further amended. In the case of government institutions, these government grants need not be. So there's an amendment. Why these are necessary for us? You have to understand while finalizing the accounts, as I said earlier, the government grant is given to a charitable institution. Do you say it is a revenue receipt? Do you say it is not a revenue receipt comes under capital receipt. My question to you, sir. A government grant is given. You are doing good work, public charitable work. Construct public toilets to the weaker sections in the outskirts of Bangalore. Government gave you a grant. Yours is a charitable institution. Is it a revenue receipt or a capital receipt? Sir. Yes, sir. You see? Senior person. So... Both are correct, subject to, subject to. If the government gives unconditionally, you construct the toilets. You need not give me a report. If you are not utilizing this, refund to me. Such conditions are not there. Government grant is a revenue receipt. In the year of receipt, 85% you should apply. Otherwise, shortage is there. Either form 9A, under section 11, 1, Explanation 2 or form 10 under section 11, subsection 2. Form 10 maximum can be for 5 years and 9A next year only you should apply or if it is not a receipt, in the year of receipt you should apply. So government grants, unconditional revenue receipt. Normally unconditional will not be there. You should submit your utilization certificate for this grant alone will be there generally. When it is a conditional, it is a capital receipt. When it will become a revenue receipt? In the finance, you may, it may spread, your application may spread to two years. Generally, government grants, government authorities, budget lapse, in the month of March, they will give. 
majority guys march 31st check given to you in april 1st majority i have seen so the government grants received by a charitable institution if it is a conditional one you should show in the balance sheet you should not take them to true unfairness it is a liability conditional so in the year in which you apply to the extent you apply it is income and expenditure to the extent you apply it will become income and expenditure remaining is again a liability so the application of income we are talking about i am telling you that the receipts and payment account if you prepare like this to prepare like this the management people must be made mentally ready are yaar your right hand pocket don't mix with your left hand pocket you should have told them they should have understood it and followed it they should have brought the books of accounts in such a way then only you can prepare otherwise you only one bank account all mix it together how can you bifurcate this receipt and payment this this money how it has gone so for the loans received is not income but the loans repayment is application allowable majority of us reading these headlines very good this year loans repaid application no last year one loan you have taken this year another new loan you take last year one loan taken not offered as income this year another new loan you will take to repay the old loan will it become application no the application when the loan repayment is an application please try to understand from the income if you repay the loan from the income if you repay the loan it is application am i able to communicate sir what is it your revenue receipts are more from the revenue expenditure savings revenue receipts are more if you repay the loan then it is application not that from this thing you have for example from the capital receipts also it can you sold the land some part of the land to repay in the other part of the land to construct the engineering college you have initially taken a bank term loan selling the land you know you repaid the term loan then also it is application because you repaid the loan <coughs> earlier when you received the loan you have constructed the buildings means it's not application the word application courts interpreted the income tax has accepted what it is both revenue expenditure and capital expenditure but it should be from the income so in the first year of the engineering college only through loans you constructed the building no income no application but subsequent years either from your income you repay the loan or by selling some assets also you can repay the loan both ways it is application when it is application loan repayment when it is not application we should have the idea unless you prepare this from income you have repaid how do you know by preparing this and dissecting your horizontally the receipts and payment account if the revenue receipts are more and used for capital payments then it is application if the revenue receipts are more a for corpus fund which you have already offered now you made yes it is application for the loans already you have offered uh, taken and repaid again it is application so the application is a word which we should 100% try to understand it includes revenue expenditure it includes capital expenditure from the income am i able to sir so <clears throat> i have given a brief idea unless you our approach is like this we cannot demystify the primarily my reading the provisions the first time second time third time we will not get the clarity unless the figures are like this and we will work out a real example in fact though for want of time one and a half hours is given to me this topic needs hours and hours together so to get digested into your brain but anyhow in the given time i have tried to explain you so the receipts and payment account so i have got another 10 minutes i have got around 15 slides but anyhow don't worry about the slides i will try to explain you <coughs> the provisions so first of all 
your 10b or 10bb talks about the true and fair so your financial must uh, statements must be true and fair the institute has said if there is a small commercial activity accounting standards will apply either incidental business or some other thing if a commercial activity is there accounting standards will apply auditing standards whether it is uh, commercial or not auditing standards will apply but my advice to you nowadays majority of the trusts also are dragged to the court section 92 of the civil procedure court you won't die anybody can file a simple suit in a local court on any engineering college or any medical college some other charitable some charitable charitable why charitable you are not doing this much money you are not using properly you should be removed as a trustee file a case in the local court that fellow has to prove his genuineness the income tax act also under the old 12a registration subsection 3 now the present 12ab registration 12ab4 if the activities are not genuine registration can be cancelled one sentence only i am repeating in the act what is genuine what is not whether i am delivering this lecture genuinely or not you prove it you prove it trust you prove your union that's sita agni parisha you prove your trust union otherwise i can cancel only one word trust must prove it is union in the income otherwise cancel oh like that to extent they have gone means union is proving means i have done so much work keep evidence of uh, the charity work you are doing so all that is necessary now so easily they can cancel to that extent they have amended the law so one must be very careful because somebody else see our neighbors generally will have stomach pain when we are doing a good work are here this fellow is doing good work and getting a good name let me put a letter to the income tax people saying that this fellow is not genuine he is buying the provisions from his brother-in-law only so maybe some profit would have made though he is saying anadana daily is doing i don't think he is genuine one letter to the income tax income tax people also come on issue a notice prove you genuine all your expenses please prove genuine so it is such a tremendous uh, pain now for the charitable institutions to claim the exemption that's why my senior sir has given the several big institutions uh, they don't want prem ji institution i can quote tata trust six tata trust decades good work surrender 12 years we don't want please six tata please search the google you will get tata trust can they manage trust we don't want income tax this sort of uh, trouble is there so they went up to supreme court to fight a genuine case ultimately supreme court said they are genuine people they sponsored oxford university indian students fees expenditure outside india section 11 subsection 1 small c any expenditure outside india forfeited exemption to prove their genuineness they have to go to supreme court after that thank god we don't want uh, to lay this sort of uh, in this country they sir, please search the google so one should be very careful in these things to give a true and fair certificate the accountancy principles now from 23 24 cash payments only they didn't say income on cash basis application on cash basis only is allowed simply amendment they didn't say you follow the cash system totally they didn't say application we will allow only on cash basis what is meant by cash basis i have given a case law also on march 31st you give a check check is encashed in april whether the check given amount for that previous year it will come or subsequent year it will come as expenditure court held if the check is encashed at any time later check issue date is the expenditure not the encashed i have given a case law in my slides in the book you will find so the accounting standards i said will apply to these charitable institutions only if they are having any commercial activity no question of icds icds only if you follow mercantile system and business head and other society so that is this thing so notes on accounts is uh, necessary and uh, about this 10b and 10bb as i said if you want to fill up this 10b and 10bb if you identify what receipts are exempt income which payments are coming within the word application then alone you can fill up correctly for example for example don't claim standard deduction as it is normally your computation starts income less 15 percent 
standard deduction, then income to be applied, 85%. What is applied revenue, capital, like that you calculate. That is not the standard method. You income applied, the remaining money, if it is more than 15%, then, then deduct 15% for the remaining money, either you offer it for tax in the same year, or you can go for two options. If it is 12 AB registration, two options. If it is 1023C, one option. If it is a 12 AB registration, either immediate year you want to apply without specifying any purpose file form 9A. If you want for a specific purpose to accumulate, not a specific object, specific purpose. Object is broader, purpose is narrow. So for a specific purpose, you should file form 10 and then the money which you are representing in the form 10 must be separate 11 file. You may have 10 bank FDs. To the extent you want to accumulate by filing form 10, must be another bank balance you should identify and report in ITR7. ITR7 asks, you filed form 10, you have chosen section 11 too, then where is that money? Which investment? ITR 7 asks, you should identify. So keep separately. That means even in one pocket, again, subclassification. So like this, this form 10B, 10BB, form 10B, third part, any payments to interested persons, your 40 capital A to related parties, here otherwise known as interested persons. Section 13.3 defines interested persons as my previous speaker has already said, trustee, managing committee members, uh, substantial donor, who is the substantial donor, 50,000 or more, either in the current year or any early year, cumulatively, more than 50,000, he is a substantial donor. They are all the interested persons. For such interested persons, any salary given, any asset sold, any property made to use, like that eight questions are given in form 10B. Normally we write no, 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 but don't do that. Be clear. Unless you do the thorough audit, the artificial intelligence of the others definitely will catch it. So that's how we should carefully fill up that negative conditions. So the 10BB positively asks some more thing also. 10BB audit report is only for 1023C people. For a section 11 exemption, 10B audit report. So there are some differences in the form. They may, they may change and make it a uniform form also. Two years back, they tried to change the 10B. Our profession has uh, protested it. It is more than the tax audit we don't want. Then they kept it silent, but they may change the form 10B maybe soon. So then the first part is audit report, either 10B or 10BB. Second part is known as statement of particulars. The same word is used in 3CD also. 3CD is a statement of particulars. So here also 10B second part and 10B second part is statement of particulars. So the statement of particulars, what they want? Positive compliances they are putting as questions. Second part, negative conditions they are putting as questions. As I told you just now, are there any payments to the interested persons? They didn't say, are they reasonable? Are they unreasonable and excessive. The words used in 40 capital A2 for the business, are there any business expenditure? Excessive or unreasonable is the word used in 40 capital A2. But here this form is not asking you any excessive or unreasonable. Are there payments? Yes sir, rent paid to the trustee. Trustee is building, I have run the school. Rent implies say, don't say excessive or unreasonable. The moment you say, is it reasonable or not? If it is taken up for scrutiny, you have to prove. So like that, all the Section 13.2 enumerated the list in the Act. Out of that, eight questions are given in the Form 10B. So you must be careful about this, about the anonymous donations also in the resistance payment account. What I said, the donations also anonymous. So what is anonymous? Name and address of the donor is not available. Is anonymous as per 115 BBC. 115 BBC is having limits. Either 5% of the gross receipts or 1 lakh rupees, whichever is higher is exempt. Anonymous also, if I receive one crore donations, 10 lakhs are anonymous. What is exempt is 5 lakhs. 95 lakhs, tax up. Sorry, 5 lakhs is tax up. Because 1 crore gross receipts, donations, 90 lakhs you have got the name, 10 lakhs you are not having the names. 
10 lakhs is anonymous. Out of 10 lakhs also, what is the limit? Taxable, not taxable? 5% of the total receipts of donations. So then 5 lakhs is exempt. Then 5 lakhs will become 30% taxable. So like that you should see the apply the 115 BBC. What is exempt, what is taxable? Be clear. So this uh, positive conditions and negative conditions are enumerated in 10B or 10BB. So those forms I need not, though I uh, thought of time, but uh, one hour 30 minutes uh, only given to me. So now I have completed uh, one hour 20 minutes. So now 15, 10 to 15, 121 now. I started 1201, now 121, I will try to stop. So these are all the conditions. So this I have given in the paper. So minimum, if you have to claim section 11 exemption, all these conditions you should satisfy. Right from the registration, during the previous year, there should not be any adoption or modification. Two words are used. Adoption or modification objects within 30 days unless you reapply. You got 12AB six months back. Registration. Now, floods, CM relief fund, some political man pressurized. You want to run this school in this colony? Give donation to CM relief fund. You gave two lakhs rupees donation to CM relief fund. Yours is an educational institution, purely educational object. Giving CM relief fund, relief to poor. That object is not there in your objects. Within 30 days, apply again form 10A. Again, fresh registration on 12AB. It is adoption of any objects other than the main objects. Otherwise, you will lose. So, adoption. Modification means intentionally you want to pass a resolution. Within 30 days, you apply. Otherwise, no. So, like that audit, submission of audit report, I said, filing the return of income within the due date, I said, so application minimum 85% should be there. Otherwise, you have to accumulate form 9, 8, 10, I already said. So investments must be in the prescribed modes, I said. Prescribed modes, some of the people, mostly in Karnataka, cooperative societies, they open the account. Some cooperative societies are only in the Reserve Bank schedule. All the cooperative societies are not in the Reserve Bank schedule. 11.5 prescribes only in the scheduled, RBA scheduled banks only. Unscheduled banks, it is beyond 11.5, be careful. So, section 13, 1 to 9, the negative conditions are there. So, like this, you should do it. So, I have given all these things, uh, the recent amendment and everything I have explained. So, the charitable trust, uh, the other than this uh, 10B, 10BB, 1023C is roadside, every street corner, elementary school, they register as a society or a trust. So for them, the limit one crore is raised to five crores. Without satisfying any condition, they can claim the exemption by filing the ITR-7. But they are also, as a precaution, I am saying, though audit report in 10BB, 10BB is not there, you give your audit report, then only the CPC can satisfy. Yes, though they are general thing, filing the return of information must. So audit act, general audit report, you remove, remove the 10B words, same first page you give, that audit report is a true and fair, finish. So you will get the exemption, as a precaution I am saying, not a statute. So the corpus fund donations, as I said, maintained specifically is the word used in the act. You should be very, very careful, otherwise say, 22, 23 onwards, recent amendment. If they ask a question, but the corpus fund donations have you maintained specifically, if they put a question, you must have the answer. Don't simply say yes, sir. Huh? So please, sir, be careful about the provisions, because what I said, the intention of the government is majority people's registration, they want to cancel. If you put too many conditions, one way or other you will violate the condition, easily I can cancel the registration. So when it is cancelled, sir already said, 115 TD, accredited income, present market value of all assets, 10 years back land, present market value pay the 30%. Then only you will realize the pain. Try to satisfy the conditions, please. So, Section 11, one explanation, four and five, loans to be applied, no question of set up earlier based on the conditions, earlier year loss, earlier year excess expenditures carry for it. Now put a full stop, the amendments have done. So I have given all these things, so I will uh, try to close. So as I promised, now open for question answer. Yes, sir, one by one, one hand mic should be given. Sir, thinking that, thinking that my ears are weak, give the hand mic, specific question, all others should listen, not Myself. For any question, raise the hand, he will give the mic, and then question answer one by one. Sir, a charitable trust running educational institution mm. has purchased land, mm. doesn't have funds. Mm. Trustees have funds, they want to 
give loan to the educational institution mm. at some interest rate. Mm. Uh, what is the call we should take? Yes, sir. Section 13.2, as I said, if negative conditions, if the trust is having funds, if it is lending the money, adequate security, adequate rate of interest shall be there. Section 13.2. Section 13 to small a it is. Section 13 to h if you go. If they borrow the money also it should be a reasonable interest. On bank FD's bank how much average rate of uh, interest it is paying. If they pay that much interest it is reasonable arm's length. Beyond that if they pay interest they are getting 13.1c. Any benefit directly or indirectly passed on by the trust to the related persons gone. This is the answer. Next question sir. Sir, when you uh, you had mentioned that when you are section 40A3 violation or section 40A1A violation, in the course of computation, if you disallow that expenditure as an application, does the assessing officer have the right to consider that as income and make you pay 30% if you disallow? 100%. Even, even if you disallow as an application? Sir. You are still after my lecture putting the same question. No yes. question of disallowance. Offering to income only is there. Only in business disallowance. In trust cases, 40A capital 3 violation, offer it as income. That's all. No second opinion. Disallowance method is not there. That is the answer. Next, sir. In Karnataka, hmm. first cannot buy agriculture land hmm. under section 109 of the Karnataka land act. Hmm. So that's why trust has given loan to the trustee. In the name of the trustee, it got registered, land got registered. What is the problem? In Sir, you are referring to 109 of the section. There is a similarly 111 section, two sections below the line. It says, if the trust applies for permission, for example, in Karnataka, if an educational institution wants to convert itself into a deemed university, 60 acres of land is minimum required. I dealt one case, that's why I am telling you. So that under section 111, the trustee should say, yes sir, we are entering into an agreement with a neighboring agricultural land. We are already having 30 acres. We want one more 30 acres. It's an agricultural land. The state government is bound to consider your application under 111 for conversion of that agricultural land into educational institutional land. They will give the permission. Then you apply for deemed university status. So, the sir already explained this question in his uh, first half. What he said? Under the trust law, the trust properties can be in the name of the trustees. Under the Income Tax Act, trust properties must be in the name of the trust only. This act is different, that act is different. Though bona fide, you don't uh, venture to acquire the land in the name of trustees. Generally, it amounts to from the income tax man also. One day or other, trustee's name land means trustee's land only. The income tax man will try to interfere in a different way. Don't do that. This is the answer. sir. Next question. Anybody else? Sir, sir you said uh, you have to maintain separate accounts for capital receipts and revenue receipts. Correct. Can we maintain in the same bank two accounts? That is one thing. Why? You know, one bank, uh, uh -huh. you operate four accounts. Why? Okay. That it is one. possible. Secondly, for uh, getting the donation, say, building donations, uh, they have to travel here and there and get donations. The expenditure can be booked in the capital only because they don't have any funds. So, capital expenditure as chartered accountants in the CA inter itself, in the CA inter itself, what is a capital expenditure is the first fundamental difference between revenue and capital. Anything enduring benefit you are going to get only is a capital expenditure enduring benefit more than one year benefit you are going in a car for collecting donations is an administration expenditure it is not a capital expenditure donation receipt is a capital receipt so um, uh, traveling expenses for collecting donations is a revenue expenditure only not a capital expenditure next question okay and uh, yes sir suppose there are two three you said endowment ah. then some uh, trusts are having uh, some uh, anadana fund hmm. that should also should be separate separate accounts only. You are right. As per the law, 
as per the ICA guidelines, any fund means, Anadana fund you are having, yours is a relief to poor. In the relief to poor, you may give clothes, you may give some other thing, something, but for Anadana, somebody donate it. So, Anadana fund you maintain, Anadana fund separate bank account you maintain. Out of that Anadana fund investments, interest don't take to income and expenditure account and credit the interest to the fund on the liability side, debit the expenditure on the liability side. Thereby, your fund balance is equal to on the asset side, Anadana FDs plus Anadana SB account balance. Both must match. This is fund accounting. But for computation of income in the Income Tax Act, Anadana fund, because you have put in the FD, neither income nor application, Anadana fund FD's interest, though you created to the fund on the liability side, is income. To the extent you applied, it is allowable expenditure. So accounting is different, computation is different, I have explained. Next question. Sir, there you said uh, it should be treated as uh, this uh, expenditure for travelling should be treated as administrative expenditure. Correct. It, and we cannot use from the same capital account. Correct? Yeah, uh, that is a donation account. Ah, your general administration funds, general income, you use uh, travelling expenditure. There is no uh, such income at all. What should it be? They have to income from their pocket. Sir, you want to do charitable purpose. If really, really administer the traveling expense itself is the matter, and if I give the answer, any traveling expenditure is allowed under the capital, majority people, 50% traveling expenses, they will book for donations, collection, traveling expenditure, traveling. <laughs> is it the intention specifically maintained? Uh, any corpus fund donation shall be as per 11 5 investment specifically maintained is the section. Can you interpret the words that uh, traveling expenditure is specifically maintained for corpus? It will not be the case, sir. Please don't uh, uh, do such things. It will not be. If sir, I am the assisting officer, definitely I will not allow. It first has just started, say about five months back, and as on 31 3, they have got some, say 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs back. Should they maintain in the same uh, that SBR current account or should it deposit immediately to the next FD account? Sir, if you want to prove 85% expenditure, all the corpus fund donations also don't put in FDs, immediately the amount has come, you do anadana and then claim expenditure, act is allowing. But if you want to keep in FD and the interest only you want to do, then you keep it, then also exemption under 11 one d no, it's a like Whether you want 11 one small a, 85%, or 11 one small d is your choice, given to you. No, it's a building fund, they have to construct a building. Yes sir, building fund also. In one year donations, I will get a 10 lakhs. With 10 lakhs, can I get a building? Oh. I wait for second year, I wait for third year. Then file form 10. You say this year 10 lakhs I received, I could not apply. File form 10, keep the 10 lakhs in FD. When you get the sufficient funds for building, then you construct the building third year, fourth year, maximum five years. That's all the answer. Any next question, Thank sir? You. Yes, sir. First, donation to a capital like a building, like suppose a, uh, the other side receiving trust is a hospital or education institution. The uh, fund given, donation given by another trust, is it uh, uh, considered as objectives or corpus? No, it is not an application. I said earlier, now also I am repeating, if you are a trust, your income is there, you apply for your objects 85%. Similar object, somebody else says, I want to donate, donate for their revenue then also it is application. If you donate for their building, if you donate for this, there was an old man, same from Bangalore, hailing from my place. He started this, doing this. A person creates three trusts. First trust income, taxable. I don't make taxable. March 31st, give a check to another trust. For its corpus. Another trust, corpus fund receipt, 11 one day exemption, I kept in the bank FD. The purpose of the income tax, why giving exemption? You use it for public. For not for somebody's trust. That somebody trust keeping in the bank FD. Do you want to give us the exemption? No. If you use it for general purpose, it is allowable as donation. Because at least if you are not spending, the other fellow will spend. But if you give a corpus, other fellow will not spend. He will keep it in the bank FD or in buildings. That is the intention of the act. Okay, sir. Next, any other question? Can a trust uh, which is which is claiming exemption under 12 AB, can it accept immovable property as a corpus donation? Why not? It is the reality in the country for uh, kings, rajas, everybody, what the kings used to do, they construct a temple with their money and agricultural lands, agrahara, give lands. This is the whole charity has started in India. So everybody gives immovable property. 
You would have seen in the Bangalore also somebody's uh, uh, the palace grounds, for example. So the kings give immovable property only, immovable property accepting is as per section 11.5 mode only. No problem at all. You can go ahead. But some of the trusts are refusing, sir. They are saying that, no, no. I mean, I, I know a friend or relative who actually said that in my will, I want to write and give my property. And he has built some four houses and all. And they, from the rent, you can use it for your trust purpose, etc. But they said, no, don't. I am not allowed under the Income Tax Act. Is there any application or corpus problem? To my mind, I have been reading these sections for the past 45 years. Some friends said means it is not the law. Any trust can accept a mobile property. What he said is the reality. For example, I am in TTD. Sir, for example, I am in Tirupati. I signed the TTD balance sheet for 30 years. There is a rule in TTD. If anybody gives land building, on the face of it, we don't accept. Mm -hmm. Why? Cine actress Kanchana, heroine, donated her land in Chennai. Type it if you go and see you. The donors will say, I am giving this land worth 10 crores free after my death should go to Lord Venkateshwara. The Lord Venkateshwara Trust TTD shall use it for religious purposes only. Religious purpose. One last word. It necessarily means a temple you should construct. Our daily evening, Harikada and the Hari Katha shall be told. The TTD cannot uh, do both the things. Uh, TTD wants to give some shop, construct shops and uh, do it. We cannot do it. So, the donor's objective you are not fulfilling. A person like me will go and file a case on the TTD. You accepted building. You are not using it. So TTD said, if it is unconditional land and building, we will take. If it is conditional land and building, we cannot. It is a ground reality. This problem is already answered. Sir, anybody else? Next question, sir. Just to, just to add, possibly stamp duty issues are there. Hmm. That's the reason they are hesitating to accept. You can possibly throw some light on the stamp duty as part of it. Possibly it will clarify. Sir, Rajgaru is uh, Mohan Rajgar CA. He is kind enough to give his one crore land to me, a trust. For stamp duty sake, he said, uh, I am giving the land. You please get it at your cost registered. For stamp duty too high, I cannot register, can I say? When a land is one crore, and the um, trust registration, as you say, irrespective of the property in Karnataka, it is only... 1000 rupees or 10,000 rupees for the stamp duty say can I refuse the no no I don't want to bear this. if you are bearing the stamp duty I will receive if I have to bear stamp duty can I say it's not the stamp duty is not a question sir stamp duty anyone can because the larger interest of the trust when I get the one crore even one lakh rupees stamp duty I am ready to pay because I get the benefit the trust the public will get the benefit stamp duty is not the case sir stamp duty cannot hinder stop receiving the properties in kind and the institute has said any mobile property or mobile property in kind if you receive as donation, its accounting institute has given. Even if you account at one rupee, it is valid. But at least one rupee you give and keep the assets, internal control. If you record as a, at market value by valuing, somebody gives a jewelry. So jewelry, unless somebody values, receiver cannot value it. So you maintain either at the market value or at one rupee, but the record should be there for all the properties received by this thing. That is the accounting treatment. It is as per section 11, 100% exemption. Yes, sir. Sir, you said receive a corpus fund. When you receive a corpus fund, uh, you have to uh, use it only for the purpose. It cannot be used for revenue purposes. I didn't say. I didn't say. No, sir. Uh, you, you are not understood, bro. You can use it for your revenue expenditure. Though it is corpus fund, the donors, if donor is not going to question you, you use it for revenue. Treat it as ordinary donation. 85% you apply. No problem. Income tax right. is not. Correct. And you said subsequently when you get money, you ah, when you get it. revenue income surplus, ah. again in that year, yeah. you go and keep it in the bank FD. Then you say that revenue income is not taxable as per 11.1D. Ah. It was the earlier year corpus fund. Now revenue income, I am keeping separately. Then it is exempt. That's so, what the amendment 2021 was. So you say that uh, whatever we have suffered in the form of 85% utilization, we can claim it, reclaim, reclaim it back reclaim. in the next. So what, how, do, how would you do that, sir? Because 85% would have actually cash would have gone. So what do you mean by reclaiming, sir? Sir, subsequent years revenue. First year capital receipt is more. Revenue expenditure is more. Corpus fund donation year in which you receive your capital expenditure is not there. Revenue expenditure is more. Allow it. Don't claim 
it has a corpus fund ratio. In the subsequent years, revenue income is more. Revenue expenditure is less. So what you will do? Whenever you got surplus money, you have to keep in FD. Then in that year you claim, yes, level revenue income is exit because the income tax said revenue income 85% you apply. Revenue income 85% you could not apply. You are keeping in FD because it was earlier year corpus fund. Then you claim section 11 FD. What is the problem? Ah, if you keep in bank FDs, the revenue income is exempt. That is the meaning. That's what I conveyed. Whether all the people have understood or he only not understand, please try to. Am I clear, sir? Very good. Next, madam. Ah. Sir, EPF trust and EGF trust need not file income tax returns even though we have interest incomes. Under section 10, subclass 25, he recognized provident fund, recognized gratuity fund, recognized provident income is exempt, provided you satisfy the conditions. So, they are not coming under section 1023 C. They cannot register under section 12 AB for section 11 exemption. They must claim under 1025 only. You satisfy the conditions. Schedule 4 is having the conditions Income Tax Act. Please go through. That's the answer. A few more questions, sir. Yes. Few more questions. Yes. If possible, I will answer. Now, if you can ask, now itself you ask one more question. Otherwise, say these questions after some time. Okay. This much page questions I cannot answer also. Even after go home, I cannot answer. Maximum time now itself I have come. Yesterday half day. This is a full day. Next day half day. For mere, for mere God's satisfaction, we do this professional service. Again, going there, answering the question paper for three hours, not possible. Please understand my difficulty, please. My colleagues, already I am doing satisfaction. Yes, sir. Next, anybody else? Last question. Sir. Yes, sir. Take the mic and ask. Sir. Sir, society, uh, they have not filed ITR uh, totally, they have not filed it so far. Mm. Now, it's a fifth year of operation. Mm. Now they can file uh, out for 1023C or uh, 1023C, sir. A yeah, society, what object? Educational object? Educational, educational institution. 100% educational institution. Yes. Number one, what was your gross receipts in the past five years? Okay. Uh, Below one crore or above one crore? Above one crore, sir. Above one crore, last few years you have not filed? Not filed. My advice to you, my advice to you, you should have applied after 1421 before 31322 okay. for a 12 AB registration. Okay. That also he said you have not applied. Not applied. My last advice to you, which is important to all the people. In 2014, the Modi government has beautifully a benevolent, a generous, a very kind amendment they have made. 12 capital A subsection 2, three provisos they have added. What those three provisos which are not there in 1023 C are? Any charitable institution, education definitely charitable institution, any charitable institution or religious institution, if it has not applied earlier, don't worry. If you apply now and two conditions you satisfy for early years also, the exemption is available. A, the object should not have been amended, tinkered, modified, altered in these three, four years. Two, there should not have been any other proceedings pending other than the normal assessment proceedings. Even if an officer has given you 148A notice, yours is a school. Three years back itself, 2017 itself, we have departed one crore cash in your current account. You will receive a notice by 2023 March. 2023 March. One crore you departed in your bank account. You have not filed the return as per your PAN number. Why can't it be taxable? Even if he's going to receive a notice, if I already received the notice, don't reply the notice. Apply for 12 AB. Get the registration. Then you say, now I got the registration. Section 12, capital A, subsection 2, provisos say, whenever I get a registration, early years income, assessing officer, precluded from issuing section 147 notice. Read the section, sir. I am eligible for exemption. Claim the exemption. This is the answer. Yes, sir. Any other question? No, last, sir, can I call this last question, sir? Sir, 145. Sir, exactly 145. With this last question, can we close? Yes, sir. Last question. Sir, trust. Yes, sold, sir. Trust to sold the property. Mm. Same uh, sales consider, consideration deposit into bank. Mm. Next financial, financial year, the deposit amount with withdrawal and use for uh, this operating expenditure. Mm. That time, capital expenditure. Uh, 
Capital gain is uh, exempted. Uh, first year itself, you should have paid the income tax because you sold the property. If you keep in a bank deposit for minimum six months, the CBTD circular. Court said even three months. But respect the CBTD circular. When you sold the asset, you should have, yeah, already having 12A. When you have 12A, yeah, sold the asset. You could not purchase the asset. Then you should have filed form 10 saying that next year I will make the FD for use it for some other purpose. Or filed form 9A offering the sale proceeds as income. Filed form 9A, sir, for next year I am going to use it. Sir, anyhow, anyhow, before the due date of filing of the return, six months time is given to you after the close of the year. Even after the close of the year, six months also, you are not having the intelligence of Are income unnecessarily, why should I pay the tax? Charitable institution, I sold the asset. File form 9A, who prevented you? If you keep all silent and next year I use it for revenue expenditure, first year will become taxable income. That's all the answer. One should be very careful with all these things, sir, as my previous speaker has said, the complication is so much. Just like doing charity, if you do the audit, as I said, crores of rupees demand notice are going to come, hundreds of cancellation notice are going to come. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. With this, I thank the Nangalore branch managing committee for giving me this opportunity of interacting with you. Thank you so much. Uh, members let me, uh, and uh, Palgunu sir, uh, we thank you for your elaborate explanation of the sections as well as the procedure and the details. So we would uh, again, I would request the chairman to have one more session for that, and we would welcome again Palgun Kumar sir for the next session too. And I would request you to do no, <laughs> you do one more kind of charity for the members. Sir. Thank you, thank you, and and all. We are breaking for the lunch, and we'll reassemble at two thirty. And uh, I would uh, request uh, Mr. Chairman to please hand over a, a memento to Palgun Kumar sir. Yeah. Uh, members, uh, we have uh, this uh, 18th uh, state level conferences on 19th and 20th of August. Please do register for it and please tell all your friends and other member colleagues for the for registration. Thank you.